Western Kentucky. Big Midwestern box, multiple firearm seasons, just the right scenario to kill yourself a giant. McWhorter Custom Rifles presents This week's show, we're headed back to Kentucky. Kentucky's one of my favorite places and for good reason. Number one, it's the closest place to Georgia where you can kill a big Midwestern whitetail. Number two, they have a rifle center fire season right in the middle of the rut. And number three, if you're not successful then, they've got a late season muzzleloader where the 45 XML puts you at no disadvantage over the center fire. You don't want to miss today's show. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by McWhorter Custom Rifles, McMillan Fiberglass Stocks, Swarovski Optique, and Barber Creek Shooting Academy. Ready to go to Kentucky? I'm kill ready. a big buck? Ready. ready you gonna to go kill back. one bigger than me again this year? I'm gonna try. Gee, my nanny. <laughs> okay, same old gun. She got her seven rim mag on a board and titanium action. Same old gun because it shoots so good. She got a Brooks barrel on it, 26 inches long, Hawkins brake, Hawkins mount, Swarovski, X5i, three and a half to 18 by 50. And she's shooting burgers, 175 grain, elite hunters at about 3,040 feet a second now that the guns hit its speed up. So it's dead on. We've been shooting it good the last couple of weeks. Just want to check it before we get in the truck. We're leaving tomorrow, get up there tomorrow afternoon and be ready for opening day, Kentucky during the rut. It'll, it should be great. So ready? I'm ready. All right, we're going to act like that's uh, a bigger deer than mine and see if you can kill the thing, okay? All right, give me, uh, give me six and a half minutes. Full value, about eight and a half mile, eight miles an hour. Ready? Minute left, send it. Good shot, uh, one inch right of the dot. Shoot one more, make sure that one luck. You ready? Yeah. Hold on, let me see what the wind. Picked up a nudge. Give me a, give me a minute and a quarter left wind. Ready? Send it. Both those are one inch to the right, so I got some room to beat you. <laughs> All right, I'm shooting a 6.5 PRC on a Borden Titanium Action with a Brux number five, 26 inches long. And this one's on our Apex LR stock that McMillan makes for us. And it's uh, got a Hawkins three-port brake, Hawkins rings, and it's got a Trigger Tech trigger set at about uh, right around a pound for me. So we're shooting a 135 grain burger, classic bullet, and this is going about 3,250 feet per, per second. A very efficient cartridge. We love this cartridge. One of my one of my favorites. So let's see what we got. I think. Those big Kentucky bucks, they better stay bedded down. Stay I agree. Out, out our way. This between the six five PRC and that seven rim mag, we're in good shape. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. A short drive to a great whitetail destination is always welcome. And in no time I was pulling in a deer camp. Well, we're almost to our spot in Kentucky. I left this morning on another road trip here. It's been going about eight hours. We're about to finish up, got about 30 more minutes. Tomorrow is uh, November 9th, opening day in Kentucky. 
and it's looking like it's shaping up to be a real good one. The cold front came through yesterday. High tomorrow is only going to be 40, going to go down about 20 tonight. Uh, it's about four days before the full moon, three or four days before the full moon, so that shouldn't hurt us. Can't wait. Opening day, Kentucky tomorrow morning. The McCord arrivals are ready. This property we've been hunting belongs to a personal friend and rifle customer, and the work he has done on this place is second to none. Opening morning, couldn't get here soon enough for me. All right, well, it's the first morning in Kentucky. It's about 20 degrees. We're fixing to take a long ride on the Polaris. All right, are you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, let's go. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Revolution Safe Company. They inspired by Pendleton, rotating gun management made simple. Day one in Kentucky for me started out with lots of chasing action early on, but then it slowed down as the morning progressed. Three straight days we hunted hard, but none of the big shooters we were after ever showed their face. Well, that's about the end of my third and last morning here in Kentucky. We, uh, we only had a couple days to try to hunt this and get this done. And just uh, didn't work out. I know the bucks are here. I've seen all the pictures. We just, uh, it's like the end of October. Like the rut should be wide open, but it's just, it's just not happening. We hadn't seen, I hadn't seen a mature buck on his feet. So gotta be in Nebraska at the end of the week. So uh, we're gonna unfortunately have to call it here in Kentucky for rifle season. We're gonna try to come back uh, in December for the uh, couple days of the muzzleloader season. So we got beat up in uh, in Kentucky this year, rifle season, but there's always muzzleloader, so we'll get it done. Okay, fast forward almost a month and we were back, but this time we had the 45 XMLs in hand for the December muzzleloader season. Well, we're back up in Kentucky. Muzzleloader season started today up here, so we got our 45 XMLs and uh, they're loaded and taped up and they nest the cartridges in our pockets, so we're ready to go. I'm ready, ready go? I'm ready. I'm you sleepy, okay, but I'm ready. You're sleepy, but you're ready? Yeah. Well, it's uh, November the 14th, and it's open day of uh, muzzleloader season here in Kentucky, and we're back, slipped in here and got in this, uh, this big muddy blind. It's on a cornfield and it's uh, got a big hardwood ridge that runs parallel with it. So, uh, uh, got a lot, of, a lot of good pictures right here. One the deer that we're after is a, <clears throat> we call him Whitey. He's a, he's a fairly white rack, uh, five by five, long G2s and threes, and kind of crap Carl fours, and uh, average brows, but a really good deer, probably 160 plus inches, and a uh, big five-year-old, so he's, uh, He's been seen off and on several times in the daylight since we left gun season, but uh, we're just hoping to put eyes on it this morning, this afternoon, and tomorrow. Not gonna get to hunt for two days, so it's gonna be a little, a short try to try to get on this deer and uh, Denise is hunting a couple of different deer uh, about three quarters of a mile from me. She's sitting with Russell this morning, so 
about 32, 33 degrees. And uh, got a west wind, which is perfect for here at about four or five miles an hour. So we're good to go. I'll sit back and hopefully about 45 XML gets to do its job this morning or this afternoon. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Extreme Wildlife Adventures, Hoff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, Surge Pro by Biofac Crop Care, and Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. Hey, Jane's back with Barber Creek Long Range Shooting School. We're going to talk about truing our velocity, which is really important. If you don't true your velocity and you run a chronograph, you're not getting velocity that includes basically density, altitude, station pressure, temperature, altitude, angle, and even wind for aerodynamic jump. Uh, I know I threw a lot of stuff out there, but it's really important to get a true velocity for your ballistic rangefinder or ballistic program. So first thing I want to do is go ahead and put in the wind speed, and it's real important, and I need to know the cardinal direction we're facing. So this rangefinder already gives us the cardinal direction because it has a compass built into it. I'm going to range the target, and it's a 701 yards and it's basically telling us to dial 12 and three quarter minutes. But before I tell Keith to do that, I need to go into the program, go to environment, and make sure it's the wind speed. So Alan, what's the wind speed? I'm gonna call it left, left two and a half. So I'm gonna type in basically two and a half. Now in this case, this rangefinder won't do two and a half, this rangefinder program. So I'm just gonna put it at a three mile an hour wind and I'm gonna sink it. And what it's doing is I'm sinking the wind information to this rangefinder. It needs that for something called aerodynamic jump. All right, once I got that, I'll hit back, go back to my profile. All right, what I'm going to do then is I'm gonna range it like I just did and it says 702 yards and I'm gonna tell Keith, give me 12.8 minutes and give me 1.8 of wind. So Keith's gonna go ahead and take a shot. We're at 700 yards. While he's getting set up, I'll explain. If you can, always true your velocity over 600 yards and then you true it as far as you can before the transonic zone or before the bullet starts to transition from supersonic to subsonic, usually within 10% of transonic. So he's gonna go ahead and shoot at 700 first, which is our initial truing. Let's go ahead, Keith, communicate with your spotter. So a quarter minute low, so go ahead and dial it up a quarter minute. All right, so what we're gonna do is what's called a ballistic calibration. So I'm gonna make sure the phone's connected and I'm gonna go into my profile and hit calibrate. And it's gonna say range the target so it gets direction of fire. And then I'm gonna go in here and say, okay, we shot 700 yards, 702 as a matter of fact. And it took us 13 minutes and I'm going to hit calculate and it says our velocity is 2956. So what I would do is hit back, hit save, and then I would sync it. And now it's recreating that profile and sending it into the rangefinder with the true velocity. Now, once we've got it trued at 700, we're going to now go out to a thousand yards and do the exact same thing. Why a thousand yards? Because again, with this bullet at a 135 grain burger traveling at you know 2,900 feet per second right in there, it's basically needs to be within that 10% of transonic, and it is, all right? We're done, going out to 1,000. It is going to be 23 and three quarter in elevation, three minutes of wind. Half minute right. How's the elevation? Mm, almost dead on. Okay, shoot one more and verify. Elevation. Elevation dead on. Dead on. All right, so we trued our velocity, and like I said, we started off at 2980, and now we're at 2960 is our new velocity. So you can see where truing the velocity really comes into play for long range shooting. Because that difference was about a quarter minute. Was it a quarter minute? Quarter minute, so 2.5 inch different. Doesn't sound like a lot at a thousand yards, but that's 2.5 inches plus spin drift, plus setup, and plus you as a shooter. It's gonna give you error. Get rid of all the error, so the only error out there is you. So the mechanical error is gone. 
Hey, that's another downrange shooting tip from James at Barber Creek. Thanks for joining us. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Borton Accuracy, Trigger Tech, Brooks Barrels, Capstone Precision Group, Hawkins Precision, and Revolution Safe Company. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Real Texas Barbecue. Almost a month later, and we're back with our 45 XMLs. It's post rut now, and the bucks are a lot more interested in food. I was headed back to the same food plot I'd been sitting because I knew it was a matter of time before the right buck stepped out. We had a pretty slow morning, so we switched things up. Um, got out here real early because we just didn't have much movement this morning. So we're back in the blind right after lunchtime. We're sitting on a very large field. I could stretch it out to 500 yards if I had to. We've got the 45 XML ready to go. Temperatures are a good bit warmer than they were this morning. Uh, the rain seems to have pretty much moved out. We may even see some sunshine before we get out of here. With the light fading fast, out walked one of our target deer. It was a tough decision for me. It was just too dark. We decided not to shoot. Well, it's our second afternoon here in uh, Kentucky, and it's about 40 degrees. It's overcast, chance of rain. We got a good wind. We'll sit this cornfield here again and uh, just. This is where this 10-pointer pretty much calls home, and weather's right, the, uh, the wind's right, and uh, we've got our 45 XML just ready to go. All we need is our target buck to show up. I looked over my shoulder out of the back window, and there stood our target deer in the brush less than 50 yards away. It was a mad scramble to try to get the windows open, gun in position and the camera move where it could see out the window. He's right there, you got to open that window. You see him right there, he's right there, right there. He's spoken, he's gone. I guess he heard you move out, he took off, bounced off the hill. Well, the blind was quiet and nobody was saying a word as we sat there. Then from out of nowhere, the buck we had spooked just 30 minutes earlier stepped out in the field to feed just over 200 yards away. One shot with my 45 XML and he was down. We looked back here a minute ago and there he was. I could just see his head up above, up above all this thick stuff. So we, we opened the window and got ready to shoot and he, he saw Seth move. And he bounded down the hill, but he couldn't smell us, didn't know what was going on. 
But he circled around down this hill and got to where he could wind everything. And we got this Ozonics running in here and this blind shut up. Come all the way out here in this cornfield at 207 yards and he shouldn't have turned broadside. <laughs> Finally got our, our Kentucky buck. We, uh, we came up here with our good friends early in the year and uh, tried to shoot this buck the whole time during the rut. And uh, so we came back, his muzzleloader season started yesterday. He made his way downwind and made his way up here to this food field and uh, we turned around and there he was, just standing there at 207 yards. And uh, that's way too close to get to a 45 XML. This one, uh, this was built on a board in action with a Brux 27 inch straight fluted barrel. Got a Hawkins three port uh, brake on it. Uh, it's wearing a McMillan Apex LR stock that we designed. They make exclusively for us. Got a Trigger Tech trigger and a pound and a half. It's been aching to be squeezed on this deer ever since back in November. And uh, it's got Hawkins rings on it and a Swarovski Z8i 2.3 to 18 by 56. Uh, got a turret on it. We dialed it to a click over 200 and uh, hit him right there on the point of the shoulder. He went down his tracks, 3,100 feet a second with a 325 grain bullet. It's enough for a Kentucky whitetail. I've been doing this a long time. It just never gets old. What a, what a, a great trophy Kentucky buck.